Rod Fleming here. Um, I hope you can hear me okay. Uh, I'm doing this piece here in front of the computer because there are a few things that I'm going to want to refer to during the course of this next chat. Gender is not caused by socialization completely. A great deal of gender is caused by socialization. I am not arguing with that. However, it has become a feminist orthodoxy that the whole of gender is caused by socialization and that basically is pish. It flies in the face of the evidence. It is not true. The foundations of gender are innate. They are a function of being male or female. Yes, absolutely. There is no part of, no gene uh, or part of gene that says that men should button up their shirt a different way from women. These are non-innate gender characteristics. We invented those. But there are many which are innate. Now, the first case I want to look at is really a shocking case. It's one, the one of uh, David Reimer. That's R-E-I-M-E-R. -E -E it's, it's all over the internet. Uh, David Reimer, or Reimer was um, a baby boy who lost his penis during a routine circumcision. Apparently there are places where cutting bits off baby boys is, is routine. Uh, and uh, what happened was that the cauterizing iron burned his cock off, basically. Burned off his penis. He was left without a penis. Um, John Money, who was at the time uh, working at Johns Hopkins Hospital and was a very, very senior psychologist, had published many papers, got involved and said, well, the best thing to do is to change him into a girl. There is a long-standing argument in, in psychology about what is caused by nature and what is caused by nurture. So how much of what we do is innate and how much we do is, is learned. And feminists have taken a particular view on this, which happens not to be entirely accurate, uh, because they're taking a political stance. They want it to be that gender is learned. Unfortunately, they're wrong. Now, money was on their side. He believed in nurture. He thought that everything we did was learned, so that gender is something that could be taught. It was a function of socialization, in other words. So he had said that this poor boy, David Reamer, should be raised as a girl and everything would be fine. And what they would do is they would give him surgeries so that he would have a, a you know, cosmetic vagina. Uh, he would always be sterile, obviously. They, um, they would give him at the hormone therapies at the appropriate times and he would get constant um, psychotherapy for money himself to try and reinforce this conditioning then this learning process that he would be a girl and his parents were to help by ensuring that he was stereotypically raised as a girl okay it totally failed it failed completely um, after puberty Reamer started having very strong cross-gender feelings and this and gender dysphoria because he was not actually a girl and so what happened was that he found out uh, he was furious um, he transitioned back to a boy uh, refused to speak to, to Money, uh, a real problem. Money's career was ruined because he'd been faking his notes, so he's a very bad man. Um, unfortunately, in the end, David Reamer and his brother, who had been used in the socialization, socialization process to try to, you know, uh, to show the other side of the gender divide used by Money in this way, um, also committed suicide. So the two of them died. And the blame was laid pretty fairly at Money's door. I mean, he's dead now, but he had a lot to answer for. So there's a very good example that makes us must make us question the idea that gender is just about something you learn. Now, there have been lots and lots and lots of experiments. Um, we know from studies of animals that many animals which do not show that the highly sophisticated gender differences that humans show. And humans are amazing this way. Gen and gen I don't know why anybody would want to get rid of gender. It's one of the most fascinating things in the, about us is the fact that we are so different in terms of gender. 
But many animals that do not show gender differences to anything like the extent that humans do, nevertheless have sex differences in their brain. Right? Sex is what is innate, basically, the function of your XX or XY chromosomes. Gender is a structure that is based in that, but is also learned. I mean, you don't learn your chromosomes, but you might learn to wear your hair long, just for example. Um, now, a number of experiments were then done in other animals which were more like us. Uh, rhesus monkeys were used by, um, in 2008, by, in an experiment by Janice Hassett and Erin Siebert. And they, uh, they note that sex differences in juvenile activities such as rough and tumble play, peer preferences and infinite interest share similarities in humans and monkeys. Thus, if activity preferences shape toy preferences, male and female monkeys may show toy preferences similar to those seen in boys and girls. And guess what? They do. So this uh, certainly, again, supports the idea that there's something innate going on here. It's not clear that we know exactly what it is, and it's not clear that we know exactly what's causing it, but there's something going on here, right? Now, another paper which was published in uh, 2010, this one is called Infants' Preferences for Toys, Colours and Shapes, Sex Differences and Similarities. Again, this worked out that although colour is not sex specific, which you might have thought, you know, because there's all this thing about pink and blue, it turns out that's blue, you know. But what we do find is that girls prefer toys that are to do with socialisation and role play, like dolls, and boys prefer more mechanical toys like cars. So, you know, your, your boy will pick up the, and we're talking about infants here, really small children, preschool children, right? Not, they haven't learned anything from school or anything like that. You know, your, guy, your boy, and any parent will have seen this, will take the, uh, the toy car out of the, the box and he'll start zooming it across the floor, you know? Basic. Whereas the girl typically will take the dolly out and sit her down and start having chats between dollies and stuff like that. Now, these are not absolute you'll see plenty of boys picking up toy dolls and doing something similar. And plenty of girls will pick up cars. This tends, this, we're talking here about an average preponderance, a propensity. Boys are more likely to want to play with cars and girls are more likely to want to play with dolls, which suggests there's something innate going on. Now, The next thing I wanted to look at is the kind of sex differences that are caused by body morphology. Now, body morphology is heavily, heavily influenced in humans by sex hormones, so it's innate. Um, the different, the dimorphism, this is called dif dimorphism, right, the difference in shape. Diform dimorphism in humans is not by any means the biggest, even in um, advanced upper higher mammals, uh, but it's still quite marked. Um, men tend to have much bigger, stronger upper bodies with broad shoulders, um, slender hips, their pelvises are very boxy in shape, they're quite square. They tend to have longer arms and legs, uh, they tend to have straighter arms and legs, they tend to have bigger hands and feet. Adult females, on the other hand, tend to have be smaller, the first thing you notice that on average for any given women, population, the women are shorter, they're lighter. A far higher proportion of their body mass is fat. And that's one of the reasons they're lighter, because fat weighs less than muscle. Uh, their bone structure is less massy. They actually have a different kind of muscle. M male muscle is uh, better suited to explosive contraction. You know, muscles only work when they contract, by the way. They don't, you don't push with the muscle. It's just a complicated mechanical system. Women's muscles, adult females' muscles, are better suited to solid, sort of steady, steady state, you know, repeated motions. On a psychological level, uh, women tend to be far more agreeable than men. And again, you know, when we talk about traits, if you look at the trait uh, differences, and they're expressed as 
graphs with their standard deviation, you know. So you'll see a, a, one of these shapes. I'll, I'll put some up. I'll try and find some and stick them up in the corner here so that you can see them. And what you'll see is a significant overlap. It's nearly all the same. But they're, um, they're shifted to each other. They're, they're, they're moved slightly so that you get some characteristics that are more typical of women and some characteristics that are more typical of men. Women, for example, are more prone to depression. They are more prone to anxiety. They are more prone to emotion. Men, on the other hand, certainly are more prone to violence, but they are also more prone to suicide. Far more men commit suicide than women, right? Now, this is not learned. This is innate. This is the consequence of being male and female. And yes, we can argue that this has to do with, and you would be right, that this has to do with the application of hormones. It's not just, you know, two-year-old babies don't show this, you know. But you cannot be a man without the application of the testosterone. It's simple. And you will not become a woman without the, the elevated levels of estrogen that she has. So these are caused by hormones, but they're innate. So on top of all of that, these, these basic levels, that's like the foundation of gender, that's where we build the social conventions that are a very complex and fascinating part of gender structure. And of course you then ask, why is that there? What happens? And the reason is simple. We, we have very good archaeological evidence to show that uh, humans were showing differences in tasks <clears throat> differentiation in tasks by gender, by sex rather, 35, 40,000 years ago. Anthropologists argue that it goes right back to the origins of humans. That there were these differences and the way that we did things were different. This led to a structure in society which many people, and I'm included, call the two group structure, such that you have one group which is men and one group which is everybody else based on women, but it also includes the non-conforming men and the children, obviously. Feminists have unfortunately perverted this, the idea of this, into suggesting that this was invented by men. It, it was definitely not invented by men. This is, was evolved because it's a successful social model, right? And its function is not to suppress women or oppress them, but to protect them. That's why we have this very evolved structure of gender sitting on top of the basic stuff, the innate stuff. And the function of gender is to allow us to uh, choose and attract mates, to pair bond, and by this method to provide a strong, durable family unit within which children can be raised in safety. Right? Because a child has to be looked after till it's roughly 12 years old. Uh, that's the age when a, a girl becomes, depending on, the, on how she's fed, generally speaking, around about 12, that's when she becomes sexually fertile. She can, have, she can get pregnant at that stage. She starts to, to ovulate. But also, smaller children just really aren't capable of looking after themselves. They do need a, a, an adult's protection. And so this system of gender which causes the bonds, which brings us together and makes the nuclear family unit, is what protects children. And that's what's made us so successful as a species, right? It's not just because we walk on two legs. It's not just because we've got an opposable thumb. It's because we have gender. I mean, this is so basic. And the consequence of gender, right, is that we have an evolved family system of clans. These are based on the nuclear family, but they're kind of like satellites orbiting in, in, in synchronicity. There's a nice word for you. Generally speaking, with a matriarch, a grandmother, at the centre, because the, 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 the not men group, the, the family group, the, the home group, uh, tend to be more static, right? Uh, there's a very good argument that people became sedentary, that is, we stopped wandering about, and I make the argument in my book, Why Men Make God, that um, the reason we stopped wandering about the world was because women wanted to stay in one place. It was easier and safer to stay in one place and let the men go out and hunt 
And that's how we started having gardens and horticulture and ultimately agriculture. So, you know, women should not be running away with the idea that this is putting women down or it has taken power away from women. In fact, the family unit has empowered women. Gender empowers women. It just does. Historically, that's what it's done. I'll go into how it comes about that Marxism has perverted this in a most shocking way in another thing. But at the moment, what I want you to say and to realise, and I'll put the links to these papers up, and there's loads of them, and I keep a website, rodfleming.com, and on it, rodfleming.com slash links. I update that regularly. So even if you're watching this in two or three years, there will be many more links to papers that are relevant on that page. And I strongly advise you to read them. It's very interesting, apart from anything else. But the feminist argument that the gender is just a social construct which is dumped upon women in order to hold them down. It just doesn't hold water. It's a lie. It's a blatant, barefaced lie. Um, I could accept that it was an error when it was first made, I don't know, 50 years ago. Anybody who's still saying it is either ignorant of the science or deliberately denying it. We know that gender is not just a social construction. We know that elements of it are innate. And it's that simple. Okay, folkies? I think I'm going to watch a movie tonight, so you have fun, do your thing, be nice to each other, hey? Eh? Be nice to me. I'm a nice guy. <laughs>